הרשע בעלו הצלחה. Something feels right. While reading the parasha, I realized this is the perfect parasha for me. It's so organized, and I like everything organized. In order, straight lines, rules. I just cannot get rid of my German inheritance. <laughs> As if God had an Excel sheet. Headlines, color-coded, exactly how I like it. In Be'alot Achad, the travel of the Bnei Israel through the desert are described in every little detail. At the bidding of the Lord, the children of Israel traveled, and the bidding of the Lord, they encamped. As long as the cloud hovered above the Mishkan, they encamped. Easy peasy. The cloud moves, you move. The cloud stops, you stop. The, the travel plan is fascinating. It says, in the second year of traveling through the desert, the children of Is Israel traveled on their journey from the Sinai desert to the desert of Pagan. This was the first journey at God's bidding through Moses. Column one, color code red. The camp of Judah traveled first, headed by Nashon. Column two, color code blue. The tribe of Yisachar headed by Netanel. Column three, code green, uh, color code green. The tribe of Zebulon headed by Elah. Then Gershon, Ruven, Shimon, Gad, Ephraim, Menashe, ben Benjamin, and Dan. Asha and Naphtali. Every set explained in exactly the same order. The, perf the perfect shadow, the perfect order. These are the travels of the children of Israel according to their legions and the cloud leading their way. God would give his commands through Moses. Moses passed them on to the Bnei Israel and they followed. Sounds familiar, similar to other chapters we've read before and very much to my liking. Again, giving orders and following them Rules, German. But then the tone changes. Something disturbed me, but I could not figure out immediately what it was. The color codes blur, the columns are not straight anymore. Only when reading a comment by Rabbi Sachs, I realized the parasha's tone changed into rebellion, disobedience, complaint. The Bnei Israel have complained on several occasions before, but now it's different. They complain to Moses, and he then expresses his thoughts to God. The Bnei Israel complain about the manna they receive every day. They're not hungry, but they're craving food. They have not tasted for a long time. Who will feed us meat? Remember the fish we ate in Egypt, free of charge, the cucumbers, the watermelons, the leeks, the onions and the garlic. But now our bodies are dried out. For there is nothing at all. We have nothing but manna to look at. Moses said to God, why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms? Moshe speaks up, even raises his voice, seems to grow while speaking. Is this a natural development? Is he growing up? Does he spread his wings? Rafi, you taught me this exact lesson. You were a very quiet child. Your eyes, did not <laughs> um, your eyes did the speaking, but you didn't express your feelings in words. You would listen and follow. Your contagious smile would fill everyone's heart, but you did not speak up. You did not shout. You never screamed at me. Until this one day. You just started secondary school and I asked you a task and you said, no. I will very much regret what I'm saying now. But, I, but you made me incredibly proud. I obviously couldn't show you my feelings, but inside me, my heart burst of pride. You spoke up, you disobeyed, and you did not follow. I literally saw my little bird spread its wings and fly. Since that very moment, you're flying high. To give our children wings means to truly give them the freedom to fly, to trust and love them completely, to give them our blessings, to choose the path they will walk, to give them wings without conditions and to have confidence in the choices they make. May you continue to explore this world with your cheeky, contagious smile. See the world through your beautiful eyes. Follow others where you think is right, but raise your voice if you want to walk your own path. This path might not be straight. You might turn on your heels a few times and try it out again, but it will be your path. Create your own Excel sheet. Color it in and put it in order. 
Follow its lines and cross out mistakes you had to make. Fall down and stand up again and make this very column better. Color it in, in brighter colors. You could choose pink. For mitzvah means coming, becoming a man, which sounds weird when one talks to a certain the old boy. But it's the time a boy's wings start unfolding and spreading out to their full length. The time he starts speaking up, finding his own path and choosing the route of life himself. God had a wonderful answer to Mo Moses' complaint. He neither condemned nor scolded him. He did not tell him off or commanded him what to do. He rather advised him. Gather me 70 of the elders of Israel. I will take some of their spirit and put it on them. And I, shall, and I shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself. God suggested to open his heart to friends, to wise men, someone with experience, the elderly. He recommended to share his trouble and painful thoughts with others. Rafi, as much as I want you to follow your own ideas, to lead your own way, please always remember that we are here for you to seek advice. Come to us elderly and, the burden, and load the burden on us. Share your thoughts and let us guide you to your next path. Wow.